I said, turn that car around and go back downtown. Then turn off the radio. Wow. You're not going to let me roll, because I don't want you mixed up in this affair. about I can hear you. Oh, step on it, Mud. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Okay, Sue. Thanks, Murphy. Read about yourself in the paper tomorrow. I'll have to do that. I'd like to break that gal's neck. Oh, no. Hi, Jimmy. I'm sorry, darling. If I hadn't had to come here on business, you wouldn't have been in this mess. Oh, that's all right. Isn't that Sue Walker of the Gazette author? Yes, it is. I suppose that means publicity, doesn't it? If she recognizes her glory, I'm afraid it does. Keep an eye on her, Lefty, and we'll slide out of here as soon as the homicide squad get out. I'll see what I can do, Ansley. I might have known if there were a murder, you'd pop out of the ink well. Hello, Jerry, darling. Never mind that parsley. Where'd the shooting take place? Inside. Anything been touched? No. The two coppers were passing. Heard the shots and came right in. I want to talk to you later. All right, Timothy, take him inside. Yes. No soap. Well, you can't keep me out. That's what you think. Don't let anybody in here. So the fireworks have started, huh, Lefty? Just an accident. Want to be able to convince the DA of that? Sure, why not? Well, I just thought that uh, seeing you and Vanny Martin and Jimmy Clark were here together, he might make something out of it. What's wrong with that? Well, it's no secret the three of you were fighting to control gambling in town. That's where you're wrong. We were all pals. Don't kid me, big boy. Don't kid me. So you're still here, eh? Well, didn't think you could lose me that easily, did you? I said it before, but this time I mean it. I'd like to break your neck. Now, Jerry, don't make love to me in public. Where are you going? See who the gal is, Danny Martin and Ensley are trying to hide over there. Gathering of the clan? What does it mean? Nothing. See what you can find out from the rest of the people. Well, Lefty, looks like somebody put the finger on Jimmy Clark. Think I'd be dumb enough to bring him to my own place to get rid of him? Be a smart thing to do. Quiet. What do you got to say? You know as much about the killing as I do. I bet he knows more. I forgot. Hello, Brown. Hello. Boo. You can't get away without having your pedigree registered, Miss Cunningham. Does it have to be printed? I'll give you a break if it's at all possible. I wouldn't like Mr. Sutton to hear about it. DA is kind of sweet on you, isn't he? There isn't very much you don't know, is there? In my job, you have to be on your toes all the time. I don't know anything about this murder. Really, I don't. For your sake, I hope not. Well, come on, let's join the party. Fanny. You say Jimmy Clark was called to the telephone while you were talking? That's right. What was the conversation about? Jimmy wanted to unload a couple of good spots he had. You mixed up in the gambling racket too, Ensley? Just to the extent of representing Vanny and Lefty. The legal end of it, you know. Since one is gambling legal. Shut up. Sorry to find you mixed up in an affair like this, Miss Cunningham. Not any sorrier than I am to be mixed up in it. You have nothing to worry about, darling. I see, Lieutenant. At the moment, I wouldn't know. You don't... Who telephoned Jimmy? The waiter said it was a woman. Who was she? I don't know. You know, he closed the door when he answered the phone. Maybe he got bad news and committed suicide. That's the thought. Well, if he did, he must have swallowed a gun and coughed up these two shells. Let me see the rod you're carrying. I don't carry one. If you're thinking of booking us for carrying these, don't. We got permits.
Satisfied they ain't been fired? Yeah, you're in the clear. Temporarily. Learn anything? Nobody knows nothing. Well, they never do. Have you any objections to our leaving? No, but I don't want any of you to leave the city. Do I get that break? Right. Thanks. What do you think of her running around with Ensling when she's practically engaged to the D.A.? You're a woman. Figure it out. I'm busy. sent for you, gentlemen, for the express purpose of giving you one last final warning. Gambling is controlled in this city and state by you men. I am hereby notifying you that gambling in all forms must stop. You've been paying protection to somebody for the privilege of running wide open. Take my advice and stop paying it. I know you have influential friends among the politicians. But this time they will not be able to help you. During the last couple of weeks, I've been approached indirectly to play ball with you. To shut my eyes to what is going on. My answer to all those propositions has been no. If you're sensible, you'll realize I mean business. Mr. Sutton, we have a lot of money invested in equipment, leases, and... I'm not interfering with a legitimate part of your business. You know we can't pay the rents we do without the take from gambling. I didn't bring you here to argue. The choice remains with you. Uh, isn't there some way we could get together on this, Sutton? Uh, you know the law as well as I. Cigarettes? Uh, no, thanks. That's not my brand. What I said goes. Gambling must stop. Ain't you being a little tough on us? Everything lawless and corrupt in this state can be traced to men like you. Within 48 hours, every gambling house that is now running is going to be padlocked, and they're going to be padlocked permanently. Just make up your mind, gentlemen, that this time you're going to be closed, and closed for all time. That'll be all. Good day. Put it away, Pat. Well, he seems to mean what he says. Sutton's a splendid man. That's why I supported him. I must go and congratulate him on his courage. See you again, Mr. Cunningham. I'm backing every move he makes from now on, so you're going to see quite a lot of me around That's here. That's fine. If we had more men like Cunningham in this town, the police would be able to really do something. Ah, uh, guys like that mean well, but they're getting your hair. Homicide. Police are reporting the last killing. Yeah, all right. Go ahead. I'm listening. You say the right thing's the same? Thanks. That makes four all filled with the same gun. What's the matter? You got indigestion? And I thought women could gossip. How did you get in here? With your key. She must have picked your pocket. Oh, now, Pat, you know I wouldn't do that. You dropped the key when you paid the dinner check last night. So today, good little me brought it back. Whoever said you can't live with them or without them really had something. How much of that DA talk did you hear? My little pink ears didn't miss a word. You can't print it. Except they doesn't pay me to get news. They just like to have me around. And you know reports were allowed at that meeting. So that gives me an exclusive and maybe a bonus. So long, Jeff. Oh, oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not so fast. What do you think you're up to? Oh, the other half of the story is waiting for me at Vanny Martin's 59 Club. Any objections? You're mixing up in something that's liable to pin back those pretty little pinky ears of yours. As long as I'm engaged to a great big he-man detective like you, dear, I'm not afraid. That will hold you for a while. I'd like to break that girl's neck. Yeah, bending her back to kiss her. Shut up! Yes, sir. Get, Get out of my chair. 
So you see, I'm only using Vanny Martin and Lefty Ross as bait. You haven't any idea who's behind them? No, that's why I'm cracking down on the small fry, hoping to bring whoever it is out in the open. Arthur Angeli is my attorney. I, I wonder if I can get any information from him. Well, I doubt if he knows. But even if he did, ethics wouldn't permit him to talk. I guess you're right. They'd probably pay him ten times as much as I do. Maybe we'll get a lead. Well, I'm anxious to do everything I can to help. You'll keep me informed as to developments, won't you? Naturally. And I'm depending on your assistance when things begin to break. Call on me for anything. Miss Cunningham is outside. Well, have her come right in. Yes, sir. I wonder what she's doing down here. We're going to dinner and then the theater. Well, Dad, I didn't expect to find you here. Has he been breaking the law, Dick? Oh, on the contrary. He's helping me enforce it. That's nice. I was in the neighborhood and thought I'd drop in to save you the trouble of running out of your house. No, it wouldn't have been any trouble, but it does give us more time together this way. I'm just about ready to leave. Oh, don't let me rush you. I'll phone you tomorrow, Sutton. Yes, do. Things should start happening soon. Uh, Pardon me. Yes? Lefty Ross is calling, sir. He says it's very important. I'll talk to him. Hello, Lefty? When I got back to my place, I found a wreck. No, I'm not signing any complaint. If you won't, there's nothing I can do. They can't do this to me and get away with it. Anyhow, I can see the handwriting on the wall. If you'll protect me, I'll split the gambling racket wide open. Be ready to talk. All I can guarantee is your safety. You'll have to stand trial with the others. No, I ain't worried about that. You got nothing on me. Is it a deal? Yes. I'll have Jerry Brown and Pat Dugan pick you up and bring you to my... We'll say about uh, 8 o'clock tonight. How's that? That's third and Rampart. All right. Goodbye. There's a real break. I'll say it is. It's wonderful. Any objection to my being present? Well, I can't think of any. Oh, I'll stay. Our date that was. <laughs> Never mind, dear. There'll be plenty of other days. I know, but I'm disappointed. What do you say to all of us having dinner at my house? Maybe we can catch the second and third act. I'd love it. I'll call the house and tell them we're coming. Then why five booze then? I don't, only periodically. And that's when you get into trouble. Well, right. exposing the deadly liquor on the human's Holy. What about tonight? What do I smell? Well, there's something I ate. That you stuck with it. Lefty Ross is coming at 8 o'clock to safe in the library. Duck into any of the other rooms. And remember, you're on your own. If you're found out... Okay, then. Don't call me that.
Come right in, gentlemen. Come right in. Take a gander around outside, Pat. Mr. Sutton's expecting you, sir. Audience. I didn't think you'd mind. Well, I do. Get him out of here. We have to have a witness. The copper here will be enough. I'm sorry, dear. You'll have to excuse me. That's perfectly all right. But certainly, we don't want to interfere. Come here. Tell the truth, my man, and you'll be taken care of. Say that. Well, I'm going upstairs. See you soon, dear. Will there be anything else, sir? Bring me a drink. Immediately, sir. Before I spill anything, there's one thing I want understood. What's that? That I get time to scram out of town before you make a move. And if I don't agree? I don't talk. What do you think? No chance. I'll say I am. What do you say? If you'll let me send an officer with you, I'll say yes. Okay. the name of the person or persons behind the gambling in this town. I'll tell you that and more. Here's your snort, Jim. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <coughs> Down the hatch, muddler. What, sir? You're drunk. Slip of the tongue, sir. Slip of the tongue. Get out of here. I'll talk to you later. Very well, sir. Uh, you're wanted on the phone, pal. Use the one in the study. Who knew you were coming here? A friend of mine who was arranging to get me out of town. to the window. Who phoned Leslie, Worcester? A woman. She, she didn't give her a name. Oh. What's the hurry? I've got to get to the office. What's the shooting about? They got Leslie Ross. Holy smoke. Nothing doing about face. Oh, Pat. Look what I found trying to make a getaway. What brought you here? A tip that Lefty was due to spill the beans. That's impossible. In the newspaper racket, Mr. Sutton, nothing is impossible. Who tipped you off? You know better than to ask me that, Jerry. Don't tell me or I'll... Break my neck. That'll... Headline. Shut up. Always the perfect gentleman. Take her out of here, will you? Read the Gazette in the morning for the latest news. She's making out of it. That ink slinger would make a sap out of herself for a front page story. 
Morning, boys. Morning, boys. Have a surprise for you, Jerry. Not going to tell me Lefty Ross has come back to life. No, he said it in the clay pigeon. But he wasn't shot. What? He was poisoned. How? I don't know. But the autopsy showed he was dead before the bullets hit him. Here's the result of the autopsy. Mmm. Hopeless and tasteless. Works on the membrane of the nose and mouth. Boss had a drink, didn't he? Yeah. And Worcester served it. He drank plenty himself and he's still alive. Or was the last I heard. And he wasn't around when Jimmy Clark and the others died. So they poisoned? Yes. We discovered it when we exhumed the body. Oh. Looks like we have an invisible killer. When we find whoever knew Lefty was coming to see me, we'll have the murderer. The only ones who knew are Cunningham, his daughter, Pat, and Tyler, and myself. How about uh, Worcester and Sue Walker? Worcester, Worcester. This Higgs, that's where she got the tip. She knew him before he went into the pen. I wonder if you're right. Of course I am. There's no doubt about it. Wait till I get my hands on that gal. Don't tell me you're going to break her neck again. No, just break her. Be careful, pal. She's dynamite. Yeah, every paper in town but the Gazette's going to get this poison story. Give me the Chronicle. Then the Express, the Globe, and the Graphic in hurry. Oh, boy. Hello, Chronicle. This is Lieutenant Brown of the Homicide. That goes for you, too. Listen to these headlines. The graphic says, Must be Ross Poison, Gazette Report 4. The Chronicle says, Police reveal Sue Walker's host. Oh, uh, save your breath. I know him by heart. That's what I thought. <laughs> what are you laughing at, you big ape? Uh, the girlfriend's got a sunburn. Yeah, the blitzes are coming out. Well, where's the salve? You won't need any. You'll get over it. Sure, just the same as I'll get over writing society junk. You mean you've been taking off police assignments? Can't you understand English? Oh, gee, that's tough. Yeah, if that's the case, I... Why didn't you give me that yarn, Jerry? Well, I don't know. I suppose I should have, but... Well, I wanted to teach you a lesson. You didn't have to make me a laughing stock for everybody on newspaper... You know me better than that. Someday, you're going to dig a hole so deep you'll get lost. Mm -hmm. And you'll help me out. Not on your life. I'll cover you up so you stay there permanently. No, oh, no, come on. Will you listen to me? So I want to talk to you. Make it snappy. I'm in a hurry. Oh, no, I don't feel bad, Sue. You know this end of the newspaper racket's no place for a woman. First thing you know, you'll end up on a slab in the morgue. You two mugs put it over on me this time, but I'm not licked. I'm going to find out who's behind these killings, and the first you're going to know about it is when you read it under my byline. Have it your own way, sweetheart. You might as well know that I'm going to take you down a peg every chance I get. Oh, you are, huh? Well, I'm like a rubber ball. I bounce right back, like this. Get the bill for destroying public property. Are you all right, Gary? Oh, boy. What a gal. Well, I'm glad to see you, Miss Walker. Maybe you sing a different tune when you hear what I have to say. <laughs> I doubt it. I'll come right to the point, Mr. Cunningham. As you probably know, I've been investigating the murders caused by the gambling war. Yes. Well, the trail leads indirectly to you. I... <laughs> Why, you, you must be mistaken. I have evidence that proves I'm not. What sort of evidence? What do you know of the Sterling Realty Company? <laughs> I owe... I thought so. What is this to do with murder? Plenty. <laughs> it's beyond me, from all I've been able to learn, you are absolutely opposed to gambling. In every shape and form. Then why has most of your property been leased for that very purpose? <sighs> Lady, you must be out of your mind. No, I'm not. Here's a partial list of your real estate holdings. Just a bite. Take a look. Gambling's going on full blast at every one of those addresses. Can't believe it. True. 
I'll have this looked into at once. I thought you were smarter than that. But you reformers are all cut out of the same pattern. Well, what do you mean? If you're on the level, somebody puts something over on you. The minute you start investigating, you tip them off. But what else is there to do? You have a list of gambling houses. Let's select one of them. Get the actual evidence. And then go to the district attorney and demand action. Now, Vanny Martin runs the biggest. The 59 Club. Up or not. Yeah, nobody's closing me up. <laughs> Number 32 in the red. Good evening, Mr. Anthony. Good evening. Cunningham? Yes. That uh, Cunningham gal gets around, doesn't she? Yeah. So does anybody. We get a play from all the best people. Tell them where you got it. I'll give it a headline. this raid with your father, I certainly never thought you'd show up. Well, I must warn Arthur. Things go off according to schedule. You haven't much time. I'll hurry. Your attention, please. All right, stop the wheels, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, I regret to announce that we expect some uh, visitors. Now, if you'll all remain calm, pick up your chips, you can all leave safely by the side door. She was born with. She's making tracks for home. I'm glad her father didn't see her. You ought to get a hot foot for bringing her to a place like this when you know the heat's on. Danny wants to see you, Inslee. You'll excuse me? I'll go with you. You got no right to do this, Cunningham. Complain to the district attorney if you don't like it. You want me, Vanny? Yeah. And so do I. At your service, gentlemen. Can a guy bust in on me this way? Legally? No. But actually, yes. Take a tip, sister. See nothing, hear nothing, and say nothing. Sorry, but I'm not one of those three little monkeys. Uh, maybe someday you'll wish you were. What are we going to do about this? Well, talk it over like sensible people. There's nothing to talk about. This place closes. All right, men. Take the people outside and make out your regular report. Well, don't be hasty, Cunningham. After all, you're both clients of mine. We should be able to reach some kind of a conclusion. Yeah, well, I know my rights. And I ain't given an inch. We'll get together over this in the morning in the office. Not on your life. We settle this thing right here and now. Well, I'll see what I can do with Vanny. 
Mr. Cunningham, I didn't think you had it in you. This is only the beginning. Oh, I can just about make my deadline by phoning. Is it all right to break the story? Play it up as big as you like. Dig it. Cunningham's pretty hot under the collar. Well, if he gets away with this, we're going to be in hot water. Reformers in the rapids are difficult to deal with. Try and stall for time. Uh, he won't fall for that. Well, he'd better if he wants to stay healthy. Well, Vanny has a long lease, and there's nothing in it prohibiting gambling. This place is a public nuisance. You know how I feel about gambling. Why did you tell me what was going on here? And all these other places that I own. I want every one of those places closed. You're going to throw a lot of money away. I don't need that kind of money. Do you realize that you're going to step on a lot of toes? Gambling is big business today. You should know. I do. I'm in close contact with it. Uh, professionally, of course. Well, in that case, you can hardly appear for me in court. It would be rather difficult. Very well, then. I'll get the district attorney. Wait up. Bring me a telephone, please. I'll put the call in for you. Never mind. Hello. Give me the district. Give me the district. What's the mark? What happened? Dead. I guess the excitement of the raid must have proven too much for him. Squid, notify the police. No, it's phone from my office. Hey, Vanny, that newspaper name is getting away with the phone. Stop it. Someplace, will you? Well, now what have you been up to? That's the first time I was ever serenaded with lead. Who shot at you? Oh, brother, you got me there. Did you get a call from the 59 Club? Yeah, somebody dropped dead. That somebody was Cunningham. And I don't think he dropped dead. What? I'm convinced he was murdered. Listen, honey, you sure none of those bullets hit you? Yes, dear, and for your information, I wasn't dropped on my head when I was a child, either. Where'd you get this phone? Jimmy Clark and Lefty Ross were telephoning when they were poisoned. So I put two and two together and stitched the phone. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think she might have something there. Honey, I'm proud of you. I'm phone has something to do with death. I'll take every phone apart before I use it. Got a hand it to you, pal. Hey, Sue's the one that raped the big hand. 
Goes against the grain to admit it, but you were certainly a jump ahead of us all. Thanks, dear. Cal, you're a marvel. That's a bed yourself, Patrick. <clears throat> Jerry Brown in. Yes, sir. It's in his office. Here's some messages for you. I hear about an attempt to kill you. They tried it all right, so from now on the little lady goes out of circulation. Not on your life. There's no ifs, ands about it this time. You do what I say. I haven't said I'd love, honor, and obey you yet, darling. No, but you're going to. You're taking a lot for granted. It'll be a lot easier inside, Tyler. Well, I was only making a personal point. Yeah, I know. We want to talk to you. Well, I was only making a personal point. Yeah. Call. Here's how word got out that Lefty Ross was going to your house the night he was murdered. What have you to say? Nothing. Maybe after a few nights in the cell, you'll feel different. Make sure no one gets to him. Why? Take him out of here and I'll tell you. Okay, Pat. I'll try to drum some sense into him. No way to do that with a club. Well, what's rattling around that funny little brain of yours? Plenty. Go ahead, spill it. For once, Jerry, I'm serious. <laughs> it's about time. Unless my book's in the paper tomorrow, I'm going to be on a spot. How would you like me to get it there for you? Can you? It's a cinch. Lieutenant Brown, give me the broadcast room. Stopping to do anything. Broadcast the general alarm to be on the lookout for... What kind of a car was it? A black sedan. Black sedan. Occupants are wanted for the murder of Sue Walker, prominent newspaper woman of the Gazette, who was shot outside a police headquarters tonight. How many are in the car? All I saw was the car and a vision of myself stretched out with a lily in my hand. <laughs> God, I don't need it anyway. I'll give you the license number, description of the men later. Get this much on the air right away. The papers will pick that up and you'll be as dead as a mackerel tomorrow. Will they broadcast it right away? But isn't everybody who has a chance to hear her own death notice? I always told you you were the one person in the world, honey. So are you. Wanted for the murder of Sue Walker, prominent woman reporter of the Gazette. Wanted for the murder of Sue Walker, prominent woman reporter of the Gazette. Satisfied? Perfectly. Well, are you going to take a run-out powder and disappear until we clear things up? No, I'm in the clear now. They won't be watching me, so I'll be able to go my merry way without interference. I always knew you were smart, baby, but this is one time you overstepped yourself. <laughs> Told you I could do anything. What are you going to do? Broadcast the report of your death was somewhat premature. Oh, don't, Jerry, please. Listen, baby, I want you alive, not dead. Well, how long do you think I'll live if they know I'm alive? I can break your neck for getting me into a spot like this. Gosh, it's good to hear you say that. I mean it. No, you don't, punk it. And anyway, I won't be in any danger. Really, I won't. You've heard of people wanting to have that cake and eat it, haven't you? Oh, Jerry, I'm not like that. Oh, I quit. What have you got up your sleeve anyway? A hunch. Hunch. <laughs> don't look so disgusted. I think you'll lead us somewhere. I've done a couple favors for Gloria Cunningham. And I'm going to see if you'll return them. Naturally, I want to do everything I can to help you. Well, the one way is to tell Mr. Ensley how your father really died. But do you think he'll really be able to find out? I figure he might, because a large part of his practice is with the underworld. Well, it's worth a try. I'll wait here for you. I'll oh, hurry. Well, Gloria. This makes the day perfect. 
That's a very nice compliment. Well, I really mean it. I know you do. Sit down. Cigarette? I've had some very disquieting news today, Austin. Well, it's too bad. What is it? I learned that Father didn't die from a heart attack. He was poisoned. Well, that's impossible. I was with him. He didn't eat or drink anything. Nevertheless, he was poisoned. But how? By fumes from a poison capsule concealed in the mouthpiece of the telephone. You remember he was talking on the phone when he died? What? Why did you hear this fantastic tale? Oh, but it isn't fantastic. Sue Walker showed me the autopsy report on it. Oh, now I know you're mistaken. Sue Walker's dead. I shouldn't have told you that. I wouldn't. Do you mean to say that Sue Walker's alive? Very much so. You see, that cat was sent out to fool whoever shot at her. To make them believe that she did. Oh, so that's it. You won't tell a soul, will you? Well, of course not. But I can't understand why she sent you to me. You knowing the underworld as well as you do, she thought that perhaps you would help us find Dad's murderer. Are you sure that's the only reason? Well, is it? Why, what other reason could there be? Oh, well, none, of course. I guess I was startled at what you told me. I, I still can't believe it. You know, I think a trick will do us both good. I'll be back in a minute. curiosity gets the better of you, because you heard too much for your own good. I heard enough to convince me that you know more about my father's death than you admit. Don't jump at conclusions. We'll see about that. Don't be foolish. Sit down, be comfortable. Make 
take a look around the stairs, Pat. Well, it's up to you to get her out. Well, if you got that license somewhere, maybe I could have done something. Well, I didn't, so we've got to think of something else. Pat, can't you think of something? Yeah, a lot of things, but none of them are any good. Say, listen, I've got an idea. Go and break in. But give me time to get to the front. Come on, Pat, come with me. before you'll be getting some of your own medicine. What are you talking about, my medicine? Ever hear the lethal chamber in the big house? Call him in the car, Pat. All right, take him away. Get going, Danny. Well, wait a minute, copper. I know I'm on the spot and I'm ready to make a deal. Too late for that now, Danny. You want the guy who's really behind the gambling in this town, don't you? I've got him. Come on. No, you ain't. But if you give me a break, I'll fix it so you do get him. Now, what do you say? 
promise anything definite, but I'll do it. That's good enough for me. I want a phone. Hensley is not his apartment. So you know he's the guy. Or I know where to get him. Picked up such a rumpus, we had to quiet her. Yeah, that's right. And I've got to get out of town. I've got to have some dough. So things blow over. Why, that's all right, Fanny. I'll leave five grand for you, Smitty. No, you don't. I want 50 grand. And I'm coming right over to get it. 50 grand, huh? Oh, why, yes. Come on over. I'll take care of you. Here. Satisfied? Come on. Expecting a Mr. Martin. Will you ring this phone a few minutes after he arrives? That's right, a Mr. Martin. Thank you. And get this too. She's quitting. She's moving. And make it 